My first thoughts when I unbox this is this is so big, where are you going to put it? That's what she said. Hey guys, this is the Extreme Channel. My name is Mr. X. We have another Extreme Collectible here. This is a custom-made Castle Grayskull. If you're a follower of the channel, you know I've been after this piece for a little bit. I purchased this custom He-Man and Battle Cat. You can check out the review. And the person who created that recommended me to a person who would create one of these for me. The guy lives in Argentina, and him and I have been communicating for the last few months. And he's been showing me in-progress pictures, and it is finally here. And if you're regular on the channel, you know that I don't like to see in-progress stuff. Once I've already purchased something, then I'm in. I don't want to worry about it anymore until I receive it on the table and kind of get fresh eyes. So I'm extremely excited like I am now. Also, if you're new to the channel, we have a format that we do here for reviews. We talk about background info, then we jump into concept, paint, sculpt. We give ratings on everything. We're not going to do that. We're going to just fly by the hip and talk about this awesome massive piece. I will give you some close-up video detail, but I'm still kind of taking this in. Uh, I just opened it. I did an exclusive unboxing for members only. You can hit the join button below if you want to figure out what that's about. But uh, I'm just blown away, and I'm serious at the intro. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Where I had planned will not even close to work, so I'm going to have to figure that out. But as I formulate my strategy of how we're going to cover this, uh, go ahead and check out this giveaway that we're doing. We are going to hit 20,000 subscribers in 2020. To do that, we're giving away a statue every 2,500 subs. At 15,000 subs, the winner will get to choose between these two PCS Mortal Kombat statues. Make sure that you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification. Then stay tuned towards the end of this video to find out how to enter. Alright, so I think I'll start with just some background info, and then we'll talk about like what it's made of, and then we'll do some close-up video to kind of look at the creation of this and the paint. So first of all, as I said, I bought this from a, kind of an entrepreneur who kind of does artistic stuff like this. I'm not sure what else he's done, but been in regular contact with him uh, as he built this piece. And I've shown this piece quite a few times on the channel, kind of just teasing it. Let's get the dimensions for you guys. So it's not very deep at all. The deepest point is just over 10 inches. The widest point is about 38 inches. Uh, actually add a little more for like this ridge that juts out. And then the tallest point back here is 48 inches, four feet tall up to back here, crazy. So he made this to kind of pair with that specific He-Man piece. So I imagine scale wise, this is probably somewhere near one fifth or one fourth scale, meaning a, actually it's probably not even that. It's probably like 1 20th scale. A real Castle Grayskull would be 1 20th scale, but the quarter scale pieces will fit in really well right here. Now, if you want to see what those are going to look like, go ahead and check out the Extreme Channel Facebook page. The link is in the description below. If you go ahead and you like that page, then you'll see updates of stuff I do like this that are off the camera. So this is obviously Castle Grayskull. Castle Grayskull is the home of the Sorceress and the good guys in the Masters of the Universe series, which is a cartoon, it's a comic, it's a live action movie before Ivan Drago met Rocky. He protected Monica from friends before she met her friends. And even though this is a skull and kind of evil, this is actually, like I said, where the good guys house. Now, Masters of the Universe, you had uh, evil versus good. You had He-Man. You had He-Man and Men-at-Arms and Orko and creatures like that, all against Skeletor and Hordak and Evil Lynn. And what I loved about that is it really played to childhood nostalgia. Even my kids love it nowadays. And I think that's why I'm kind of giddy and I'm kind of without words during this review. It's just, I am absolutely loving this. It really, really takes me back to my childhood more than a lot of statues do. I mean, Eternia is now coming into the X cave and Eternia is the name of their realm or their world. Now it's made of a combination of things. So essentially, look at the back here. You have a wood frame you can see and then some felt padding on the back just to cover up the ugly parts of the unfinished area. Then the front is really a mix of a lot of foam uh, some wood, some plastic, and I don't know if this is real moss or not, but it, it, it's probably artist moss, but it, it looks fantastic. Some of these are rubber, for sure. So it's incredibly light, which is the nice thing. So moving it is very, very easy. The box that it came in was actually huge. Check it out right here. Shipping was a very unexpected, I think almost $400 just for shipping, simply for the fact that it's coming from South America to North America with traditionally high shipping prices, plus you, uh, you throw in the Cranges virus. It almost prohibitively so uh, makes these. So all in for this guy, you're about a thousand dollars. 
And realistically, it's like, this is a thousand dollar toy. I mean, when I was growing up, I had the Castle Grayskull uh, toy that I absolutely love. That's probably worth a lot of money nowadays. Some of you, I'm sure, had it as well. And this isn't meant to be a functional toy, obviously. It's a piece of art, it's a decoration. I'm kind of just without words looking at it. I am really, really loving this. So the one thing that's kind of putting it off to me, and I knew this, is it is cheap material. Like up here, all of this is foam, and you can tell when you look closely at it, and obviously you can tell by the touch. But uh, let's see if you guys can actually tell on camera. Let's, let's do some close-up video of it right now. So much to look at here. Let's just kind of start at the top. What I love is I, I think he did a great job referencing the original Grayskull. While it's been a while since I've actually studied it, I think a lot of the key components are there. He's mixed, obviously, the huge skull that's part of the, the drawbridge. Um, I like the color of it. I think the color is a spot on those different colors of green and yellow and black that are just mixed in. And this ivy. So like I said, some of this I think is like uh, artist moss, uh, which I don't even know what that is. I just made it up. And then some of this is actually painted rubber, like right here, this is. But I love the fact that he also incorporated, it's a castle. So you see legitimate building structures like these wood pieces right here, which is real wood, by the way. I think, nope, nope, it's foam. It looks, looked like real wood. And the grooves that he added just to the detail in this uh, rubber foam mesh right here, he kind of carved the different bricks. Have the little ledges to kind of remind you of a castle. This is one of those pieces, I think up close it still looks very good, um, but two to three feet away is when it really looks fantastic. So as I said, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of this mesh back here, but I wouldn't want it uh, clear either. I wouldn't want to see what's behind it, especially depending on where you have it displayed. Now, one interesting fact down here, all this moss and wood and stuff like that, it looks real. It really does, and I like how it's more gray at the bottom with some of that green effect uh, right around the skull itself, the large teeth here. And then the green really starts at those pillars, traditional Castle Grace skull. And even on the top here, almost looks like the helmet he's wearing. But just awesome, awesome piece. Now, one thing I wanna look at is the drawbridge. Now on the inside of the drawbridge, it is not finished. I wish he would have finished that. Um, however, depending on where you're at, if you're looking at it from where I am right here, you definitely see it. But if you step back, you do not see that. And you see the front of it, which looks fantastic. I think he did a great job on this. You know, carving into rubber, the wood look here, uh, the cracks in it, the moss coming out, and then even on the bottom of the platform here. So if I could find a way to secure this, I could actually secure or put a figure right here at the bottom but even this metal aspect too. And again, this is just rubber. Very cool. I'm really digging everything about this. Like I said, up close, you can tell the material it's made out of, which I think is a disadvantage, but I think it's a necessity. I mean, I, I can't imagine actually carving this out of uh, resin or polystone. And then first of all, it would break during shipping. The second price would be prohibitive to do a cast this big or even to uh, ship it. So let me give you a once over again here. Overall, very pleased. So I'm honestly not disappointed at all with the look of it. I think the look is fantastic. It's really well done. I don't like the fact you can see the black felt behind it, but I don't want you to be able to see through it wherever I display it. So I think that was okay. And then this draw drawbridge uh, isn't the best functional aspect of it. I wish he would have finished this part right here. Uh, as I said, that, that's really the only negatives on this. Um, the price is quite a bit uh, when you throw in the shipping, which like I said, was unexpected. This was just under $600 and I got a discount on it because I bought that uh, Masters of the Universe. So plus that 370 shipping is really what put it over the edge. Um, I am not disappointed in the price though. I think honestly, I could get my money back on this, uh, not easily, but I don't plan to. Uh, this is something I can hand down to my kids and they can hand down to their kids if it'll last that long. Who knows with the materials. But one really cool thing about this is we always talk about do things have the X factor or the wow factor. And I'm not going to grade this, but I think it does. I mean, I wouldn't call it a five out of five piece by any means. But when people walk into the man cave and they see 200 different statues to look at or, or even more than that, they will be naturally drawn to this not only due to the size, but the detail, and especially if you're a Masters of the Universe fan. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What you think of this piece? Am I missing anything? Am I totally wrong? Are you agreeing with me? 
Let me know that because entering a comment actually helps you win that statue. To win one of these Mortal Kombat statues, all you have to do is comment on a video. At 15,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick a random video and pick a random comment. That person will win the prize. They can choose between these two pieces. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If you're new here or you just haven't done it yet, hit that Mr. X logo to subscribe. Check out some of these other awesome statue reviews. Otherwise, I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care of yourself.